So, we're three weeks in and we're starting to get some nasty brown algae covering the sand and rocks. Looks like we've hit the ugly stage. What's up reefers? Welcome back to another episode. My name is Tris and you are watching the Nanotank Reefer YouTube channel. Before we start today's episode, I want to say a massive thank you. The channel's recently hit 900 subscribers and honestly, you've got no idea what it means to me. Most of the time, my missus doesn't even want to listen to me. Uh, so to have 900 people willingly um, subscribing to the channel, watching my content and uh, listening to me waffle on about my reef tanks is quite frankly, uh, unreal. So a uh, massive thank you to everyone that subscribed to the channel. If you are new to the channel and you are enjoying the content, please drop me a like. Uh, please do consider subscribing to the channel because honestly it helps me out no end. So that being said, uh, today in today's episode we're going to go through uh, what to expect and how to deal with the, the ugly stage of uh, starting a new reef tank. Make sure you do stick around to the end of the video as we'll, uh, I'll show you exactly what the tank looks like just one week after the start of the algae bloom. First of all, what is this brown algae that's covering the sand and rocks? It's diatoms. Diatom blooms are completely normal in the start of any newly established reef tank. Some do try to combat this by cycling the tank with the, the lights off, uh, but in my experience, you're always going to get this bloom pop up at some point. So if you cycle it with the lights off, it's just going to pop up a few weeks after. It actually occurs because of an imbalance of nutrients in a, in a new system. Uh, the biological filtration hasn't, hasn't kept up with the, uh, the biological load of the, uh, of the tank. So you've got uh, excessive nutri nutrients that need to go somewhere. Um, and that's in the form of, of, of algae. Once the water chemistry has balanced itself out and there's no spikes in nitrates or phosphates and the, uh, the biological filtration has uh, started to keep up with the biological load, um, you'll notice the, the diatoms will lose their food source and they will, uh, they will actually go away as, pretty much as fast as they showed up. So how do we deal with a diatom bloom? I've actually broken it down into four easy steps for you to follow. Step one, do not panic. The tank is still maturing, diatoms and algae are normal within this stage of the reef tank. Uh, they'll cover your sand, they'll cover your rocks, they'll cover your glass, your pumps, you name it. Literally wherever light is shining, diatoms will grow. But do not panic. Step two, it's time to add some cleanup crew. You don't need to go crazy. Uh, generally diatoms will burn themselves out given enough time, but we don't want it to get out of control. I've gone for five trochus snails. Uh, it's only a small tank, so I've added three medium sized ones and two smaller ones. Don't forget you can always add more later on if these guys can't keep up. What you don't want to do is chuck in a whole bunch of uh, snails, cleanup crew, only for them to starve because there's not enough food to go around. A few days into the bloom I actually added a strawberry conch. Uh, the, the snails were doing a great job of cleaning the rocks and the glass but they weren't really venturing onto the sand bed. I pulled this guy out of the, uh, the 250, uh, my other tank, and he's an algae eating machine. He literally mows the sand bed down in a matter of hours and then he just buries himself in the sand for the rest of the day. This won't be his permanent home. Uh, it's quite a small tank and I don't think there'll be enough food source in there to, to keep him going. So I'll just pop him over in the 250 and then whenever the sand bed needs cleaned or turned in this tank, I'll uh, put him back in here for a week and then put him back over to the 250 where he normally lives. Step three, do some water tests. Ideally, you should be testing your water weekly anyway. So you might as well get into the habit early. It is a new tank with no corals. So all you need to concentrate on is nutrients at this point. A phosphate and a nitrate kit is all you'll need. Currently I'm using the HANA checker for phosphates and the Red Sea nitrate test kit for obviously nitrates. I usually aim for between 0.02 and 0.05 parts per million on phosphates and around 5 to 10 parts per million on nitrates. It is personal preference but as a rule I would recommend keeping your phosphates below 0.1 parts per million and nitrates below 20 parts per million. It is a highly debated topic, uh, so we're not going to get into that today. Um, but it really depends on what corals you're planning on keeping in your tank to what nutrient levels you'll keep. Actually, drop me, drop me a comment below. Uh, let me know what you're keeping your tank at, what nutrient levels you're keeping your tank at, and also what corals you've got in the tank uh, with those nutrients. It'll be really interesting to see what everyone's tank is, uh, is running at. And finally, step four. Carry out your normal weekly routine, uh, your maintenance routine. On this tank it really doesn't take me that long, uh, I think both tanks combined takes about an hour. I do start mixing the water the night before to make sure the salt is fully dissolved uh, and the water is up to temperature. I think I do a little over 10% water change on this tank, uh, 10 litres in total, given it's a 75 litre tank uh, I think it works out to be about 13% water change. 
Then I switch out the filter floss and eventually I'll add uh, cleaning, the, cleaning and emptying the skimmer cup to the list. Currently it's still bedding in, so it's not pulling out much at the moment. I only switched it on the day before I started filming this video, uh, so there's nothing in the filter cup. Uh, there's no good bubbles being produced. Uh, but that will be added to the list uh, probably next week or the week after, depending on how long it takes to bed in. And that is it. It is as simple as that. Uh, you don't need to panic. You don't need to do anything crazy. You just basically do what you normally do on a regular week or what you will do on a regular week. Because you'll be doing your water tests weekly. You'll be doing your maintenance weekly. As you can see, the sand bed's fully cleared up thanks to the conch. Uh, the rocks are spotless other than the green coloration that's starting to take hold. Eventually it will mature and cover it, be covered in purple coralline algae, but that will take a few months to fully develop. So yeah, I'm super happy with that. Just one week after the start of the diatom bloom, it is started and ended and the tank is nice and clear, as you can see. Um, I'll move the conch back over to the 250 because this is a small tank and it is a little bit too small to keep him in there. Because uh, as, as you can see, it's pretty much clear and it's got nothing to eat now. So we'll go be back, he'll be going back over to the 250, uh, but I'll pop him back over here if I ever need to. Uh, just to give the sand bed a nice turn and, and clean it. But I'll be siphoning the sand bed and keeping the sand bed nice and clear in this tank. It's a bit of a pain in the 250 because um, I've got so, much corals in there, so many corals in there. Access to the sand bed's a nightmare. So that about wraps it up for this week's episode. If you've made it this far, I do want to say thank you. Uh, you've watched the whole way through the video. Um, so I really appreciate that. If you have enjoyed the video, please do drop me a like. Uh, if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to the channel. As I say, it really helps me out. And uh, have a cracking week and happy reefing.